So now in this video, we'll talk about set interface. Now we have talked about, uh, at the least we have talked about collection interface, right? So all this comes under collection API. Now set, in set also we can have elements the way we have done with at the least or the list, right? So let's create some, let's create a set of elements. So we'll say set, uh, so we'll say set and let's import the package for set. You can see the package for set is java.util. And we can also specify the generics here of what type we are going for. So let, let's say we are creating a set of integers and we'll say uh, values equal to. Now the problem is set itself is an interface. So if I click on set, set is an interface. So of course, and set, uh, set extends collection. That means it's a part of collection. So if I create object of set, we cannot do that with the, with the help of set interface, right? So we have to say, we have to search for a class which implements set. And that class is hash set. So let's mention that here. And we need to import the package for that as well. And that, and that class even belongs to java.util. And if I go to hash set, it's a class, where's that? Uh, it's a class which implements set. Okay, so that means we can create the object of set in this way. Now, once we got the object of set, we can add a values here. So we'll say values.add. And we can some we can put some values. We can say five values dot add, and let's say this is six, and then say values dot add, and we can have a value which is let's say nine. Now, if you can see, it is almost same like your list, right? Nothing changed. The only thing is in list we use list here we use set, in list we use add a list here we use has set, right? And we can also print all the values here. So we can say int i colon values. I can use the enhanced for loop here. And we can print all the values the way we, which we, I mean, the, the same way we, we do with list. And if I run this code, and you got, where's the output? It's coming. So you, you got the output as 5, 6, and 9, right? It's that simple. Now, then question arises what's the main difference between list and set? Because both are doing the same stuff, right? The main difference is you can see now, if I create, <coughs> if I add one more value here, let's say the value is 6. So you can see we have five, we have six, we have nine and six. Now six is repeating, right? So if I run this code, I mean, if this set is of set, if I'm using list, if I run this code, we'll be getting five, six, nine and six because list works in that way. In list, you can have duplicate elements. But when it comes to set, set will have all the unique elements. Example, if I run this code, you can see we are getting only six, I mean five, six and nine. We are not getting this six again. <coughs> that is something you have to remember. In set, it supports only unique elements. So you cannot you cannot duplicate elements here. And if I okay, if I click on this add method, you can see add method here returns a boolean value. Now we can use that boolean value. Let's say <coughs> let me put all these values inside a system.out.println just to see if those values are getting added or not. <coughs> let me do it for, for four times with different values, of course. And we'll say this is 6 and this is 9 and this is again 6 as we have done last time. And if I run this code now, you can see it says true, true, true. And when you're adding this 6 here, it says false. That means you cannot add the duplicate elements. So as soon as you try to add the duplicate element, it will say false. So 6 is not getting added. And this feature you can only, only achieve with the concept of set. Okay. So that's how your set works. So in set, it doesn't support duplicate elements now what i will do here is i will simply put some more values let's say i'm putting 87 and let's say 97 let's say 34 and let's say 92 right so i'm putting all these values so if i run this code now it should it should give you all the values and you got all the values nothing wrong with that but can you see the sequence here i mean while you're entering the value you're getting the same values but while you're Fetching the values, the, see the sequence, you're getting first 97, then 34, then 87, and then 92. So it is not following the sequence. Now, why is the case? <clears throat> it should follow the sequence, right? The problem is, you are using a concept of hash set, which, which uses a concept of hashing concept. So what hashing does is, whenever you put these values inside your heap memory, it goes into certain locations. 
and hashing will do the i mean it, it, it will use some algorithm using which the nearest value will come first so maybe while saving the value you are saving 97 near to the i mean it, it's very near to fetch so it is it is using some algorithm using which it is it is fetching the value so sequence is not getting maintained okay so hash set will not give you the sequence of i mean this it will not give you value in sequence that the, the point you have to remember okay i mean nothing wrong with your collection nothing wrong with your values it's just that hashing concept doesn't save everything in a proper sequence right but let's say if you want to store in ascending order so instead of using hash set we can also use tree set <coughs> let's import the package for that uh, for importing package you can say control shift o in windows and command shift o in mac mac and if i run this code now you can see you're getting everything 34, 34, 87, 92, and 97 in sequence. So tree set will give you data in a particular sequence and that is in ascending order. I mean, you can also reverse it. You can do apply. You can reverse the values and all those stuff. But that's how your set interface works.